Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're working on some more trigonometric equations solving for those general solutions for the angle theta. So let's jump right in. Let's look at 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 is equal to 0. So first we need to do a little bit of algebra to isolate the trig function. So if I have 2 cosine squared minus 1 equals 0, I can add 1 to both sides and I get 2 cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Dividing by 2 on both sides, I get that cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 half. Now I'm going to take the square root and be careful here. If I take the square root, I have cosine of theta equals plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. And we're used to seeing this with a rationalized denominator, so this is plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. So here we have a case where we have a lot more solutions than we did in some of the previous videos. I'm looking at all values of theta for which cosine of theta is either positive square root of 2 over 2 or negative square root of 2 over 2. Let's go ahead and take a look at a graph for this one. So I'm not going to do the unit circle. Let's just consider this a graph of angles in standard position. I'm looking at all angles with these terminal sides, aren't I? I have here, this is pi over 4, so cosine is positive root 2 over 2. This is 3 pi over 4, so cosine is negative root 2 over 2. This is my 5 pi over 4, so cosine is again negative root 2 over 2. And this big one all the way around, that's 7 pi over 4 that gives me that cosine is positive root 2 over 2. Now we can get a little bit creative here when we're writing the solution. This one actually works out quite nicely. I could write each of these angles individually. I could write theta equals pi over 4, theta equals uh, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and a four different pieces to my general solution. That would still be correct, but it's a lot of writing, isn't it? So I'm not even going to bother here. We notice right away that these angles, some of them are a distance of pi from each other, right? They're all in these straight lines, and we can document that by noting that theta is equal to pi over 4 plus k pi, and theta is equal to 3 pi over 4 plus k pi, where k is in the integers. Now what we have here, this first solution, pi over 4 plus k pi, that gives me uh, all terminal sides of angles that lie along this line y equals x. And this other side, theta equals 3 pi over 4 plus k pi, gives me the set of all terminal angles, or sorry, all angles whose terminal side lies along this line y equals negative x. But we could do a little bit better. Now let's just say we started over here at pi over 4. From pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, I'm adding pi over 2 to pi over 4, aren't I? From 3 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4, I'm adding pi over 2. From 5 pi over 4 to 7 pi over 4, I'm adding pi over 2. And from 7 pi over 4 to 9 pi over 4, which is coterminal with just pi over 4, again I'm adding pi over 2. All this to say that all of my particular solutions in one period are an angular distance of pi over 2 away from each other. So I can actually combine these solutions into one solution, and that solution is going to be theta is equal to pi over 4 plus k pi over 2, where k is an integer. Right? If you don't see this single solution, go ahead and pause the video. Take some time to, to work this out in your head. Make sure this makes sense. All of the solutions that we have here are values of this general solution for some value of k. When k is 0, I get pi over 4. When k is 1, I get 3 pi over 4. When k is 2, I get 5 pi over 4, which is down here. When k is 3, I get 7 pi over 4 and we can keep going. We can go negative k's, bigger positive k's, etc, etc. Here we've captured all the possible solutions for our equation in a very simple general solution. Okay, so this comes in handy sometimes. We can reduce our solution uh, quite well using this.
Let's take a look at another one. 4 cosine squared of theta minus 4 cosine of theta plus 1 equals 0. So here we have a quadratic equation in cosine. And you might be thinking, well, how are we going to deal with this? Well, we're going to deal with it the same way that we would deal with a quadratic equation in some variable x. If we had 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0, and we wanted to solve for x here, we would solve for x by factoring. I know that 4x squared minus 4x plus 1, we can see this factors into 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. All right, we see this factorization. Uh, foiling this out, I would get 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x, which is minus 4x, plus negative 1 times negative 1, which is plus 1. So this is a factorization of this quadratic equation. Now we can do the same thing with this equation over here. We're dealing with cosines instead of x's, but we can treat the cosines as x's. They're still just values. So factoring over here, I'm going to get 2 cosine theta minus 1, go ahead and simplify a little bit, squared is equal to 0, because the factorization here is the same as if we were doing it with x instead of cosine. Now, 2 cosine theta minus 1 squared is only going to be equal to 0 when 2 cosine of theta minus 1 is equal to 0. In other words, I'm taking the square root of both sides. I don't need a plus or minus here, because plus or minus 0 is always just 0. Now, I can go ahead and now solve for cosine. Adding 1 to both sides, I get cosine of theta is equal to 1. Sorry, 2 cosine of theta is equal to 1. And now dividing by 2, I get cosine of theta is equal to 1 half. So now finding our solutions on a single period, I know that cosine of theta equals 1 half at theta equals pi over 3. And I also know that cosine of theta equals 1 half at theta equals, we're looking in quadrant 4 now, it's going to be 5 pi over 3. So these are my solutions of one period. To generalize, I need to add 2k pi to both of them. And of course, this is where k is an arbitrary integer. So now we have our general solution. This is going to give us all possible solutions for the equation given in the question. All right, let's take a look at one more of these for this video. Cosine theta sine theta minus 2 cosine theta is equal to 0. Now again, if we had something like xy minus 2x equals 0, we would know how to solve this problem. Now keep in mind, one of the best ways to solve these problems when we have 0 on the right hand side is to change the left hand side from a sum or difference into a product. Once we have a product, we can split that product up and solve them separately. And we'll see what I mean here. Uh, if you didn't catch what I just said, let's take a look here and see what happens. So I have this common factor of cosine theta in both of these terms. So I can factor out that cosine theta, and I get cosine theta times the quantity sine theta minus 2 is equal to 0. So now I have a product is equal to 0. Now we know a product of two numbers equals 0 only when one of those two numbers is itself equal to 0. So in other words, the solutions of this equation are the same as the solutions of cosine theta equals 0 and sine theta minus 2 is equal to 0. Oops. Whenever one of these is equal to 0, then the product up here is equal to 0. And this product is only equal to 0 whenever one of these is equal to 0. So let's look at this first one. I know cosine of theta is equal to 0 at theta equals pi over 2 plus 2k pi. It's also equal to 0 when theta equals 3 pi over 2 plus 2k pi. But this is one of those cases now where I can combine these solutions and I actually get theta is equal to pi over 2 
plus k pi. Now for even values of k, I'm going to be getting solutions from this first part of my solution, and for odd values of k, I'm going to be getting solutions that are in this second part of the solution. Now this is only part of the problem. We need to also solve out when this side is equal to zero. So let's take a look. Sine of theta equals two, adding two to both sides. But now we have a problem here. This theta here does not exist, right? We know there is no such theta such that sine evaluated that theta is equal to two. The range of sine is negative one to one and a closed interval. So we can never get sine of theta is equal to Two. So what this means is this part of the problem provides us with no information and our original product in this case is only going to be zero when cosine of theta is equal to zero. Right? This part sine theta minus two is never equal to zero so really we're just looking at the problem cosine theta equals zero and we found our solution here to be theta equals pi over two plus k pi. Oh, missing an important part where k of course is an arbitrary integer. All right, uh, that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next video for some more examples of trigonometric equations.